Have you listened to someone tell a story too many times? Hey, Breakfast Club, welcome back to Breakfast at Tracy's, where we are looking at wise investments, what God has to say about the subject of money. And we are in our final week of a three-week chapter on money challenges. And today is, well, it's really kind of sad, actually. Before we get into it, though, have you ever listened to a story too many times? Like, oh yeah, I've heard uh, you tell this one many times before. Sometimes you may listen to someone who makes the story a little more exciting each time, a little more exaggerated and embellished. But imagine hearing the same story worded in the same way over and over again. That's the problem with a lot of the stories that Jesus told. We hear them, we hear them again, again, and again. We think we've gotten them. There isn't anything possibly more we could get. Jesus' story of the sower is like that. Many of us are all too familiar with the farmer who throws seeds on different soils. Got it. The seed is God's word. Got it. We're the soils. Got it. On it goes. But sometimes a little detail can stick out. And that is what happened to me not long ago in reading this story. Jesus talked about thorny soil, where God's word is quickly squeezed out. Well, what are the thorns? It's television, right? Uh, alcohol. Gossip. Illicit sex. Uh, unforgiveness. All kinds of guesses. Jesus said, the seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things. So no fruit is produced. The lure of wealth. That just jumped out at me. This person may or may not already have money, but he or she wanted more. This is lust. Many people associate the word lust exclusively with sex, but biblically it is not limited to that. To lust means to over-desire something, something that is good on its own that has become an ultimate. This thorny soil has decided that money is the ultimate. He's lusting after money, cash. Thorny soil can be a person on minimum wage or a person who sleeps in a mansion in Bel Air with his freeloading nephew from West Philadelphia. The result, Jesus said, is that no fruit is produced. Instead of relying on God's spirit to have life, this person is relying on money. The lure of money chokes off the power of God's word, the power of freedom, the power of forgiveness, the power of humility, and God's word dies getting choked off by the overabundance of desire, the desire for more money. Why would Jesus add this detail if this wasn't a very real danger for all of us? Could it be that many people in churches today are listening to sermons, podcasts, going to prayer meetings, reading their Bibles, giving regularly, and serving their churches, but are not becoming more loving more filled with peace or joy or self-control, all because in their heart, though they dare not admit it even to themselves, they really would be happier with more money than more Jesus. Could it be that our collective lust for money is keeping us from the full and abundant life Jesus promised? May it never be, Breakfast Club, but we all need to seriously consider this warning from Jesus. Please pray with me. Our Father, please reveal to us if we are lusting after money. Please show us if money is gripping our hearts more than you are continually melting them. May the Spirit be free in each person watching this to change us into the image of Jesus, becoming more and more like him. And may money never have the draw that you have. Keep us far from the lure of money, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, on this Tuesday, your question, Breakfast Club, is can you see clear signs of God changing you? Why or why not? 
Tomorrow, we hope to have you back at Breakfast at Tracy's and we are going to be looking at the challenge of religiosity. I hope to see you then. Take care, everyone.